resistance now and we're going to talk about mixed circuits as well. So for resistors in series, um, we have three resistors in the same path. You can find that the total resistance, you simply add them. A greater resistance means less of the current, of course. So R total will simply be R1 plus R2 plus R3. Um, if you look at these two, you will realize that in this case, the current has to pass through three resistors. It's going through all three, so that's a high resistance. But if I take the same resistors and I put them in parallel instead, you will realize the current reaches the junction and it will have a choice. It can go up, it can go straight, or it can go down. That means my total current will actually decrease. Because it's not the, sorry, the total current, the total resistance will actually decrease. The current will increase because it's easier for the current to flow through one resistor in each branch. So this one will have a greater total resistance. This one will have a lesser total resistance. He will, of course, have less current. And this one will, of course, have more current. You can make a little combination. You can add them and figure out how to calculate the total resistance. We already know you just simply add these. But for this, a way to add them is a little bit different. You will just do the formula 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And you put that in a bracket to the power of minus 1. That will actually get you the total resistance. Easy. You don't need to do any other fancy things. You just put 1 over this, 1 over this, 1 over this. Let's say this was 10 and this was 10 and this was 10. You will literally do 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 to the power of minus 1, and you will get your answer. If you want to find the resistance in a complex circuit, we realize that we now have a mix. We have this resistor in series with these two, and they are in series with this one over here. So in order for me to figure out everything, I need to know, first of all, let's say the total resistance. I will do R1 plus whatever this answer is, plus R4. So that's 2 plus 1.5 plus this. This one I can use my formula 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 to the power of minus 1. Or you can remember that if both resistors in parallel are the same, the total is always a half. It's always half. So this is 1 and 1. The total will be 0 0.5 ohms. Done. Do not need to calculate. If this was 10 and 10, the total will be 5. 20, 20, total will be 10. So that's a little trick to speed things up. So to find the total resistance, we add this one plus this one plus this one. Uh, R1 plus RP plus R4, 2 plus 0 0.5 plus 1.5, and that gives me 4 ohms. We are done with the total resistance. If you want to find the current coming through the battery, the current going through the battery, I need to know the total resistance of the circuit which I do know, we just calculated it. So I can do 10 divided by 4. 10 over 4 is 2.5 amps. Great, we've figured out the current through the cell. So now I know we have 2.5 amps passing through each resistor, and of course it will split between these two. If I want to find the voltage across R4, or even R1, I can use Ohm's law if I like. I can do V equals IR. I can do 2.5 times 1.5, and I will get 3.75 volts. I could also use the other formula that I showed you, the Vn multiplied by R1 divided by R total. That will also give me it. That means I do not need the current. So there are more than one ways to do this. If you wanted to find the current through R2, so now, in order to know the current going through R2, I need to know the voltage in this branch, because these two will have the same voltage. It is being shared by all three, so this 10 volts, I've already lost 3.75 here, I will lose some here, I need to figure out what the voltage here would be. Again, both ways you can do it. You can use the Vn formula multiplied by this resistance divided by the total resistance, or I can just simply use Ohm's law. Uh, I already used Ohm's law here, so I will continue with that. V equals IR. 
I know I, 2.5. I know R, the total R was 0 0.5. So the voltage here and here, the same, is 1.25 volts. Now that I know the voltage, I can find the current in each one. I can do R2, this one over here, to find the current through R2. I'll do V, which we just found, 1.25, divided by R, which is 1. 1.25 divided by 1, which is 1.25 again. So that means 2.5 is coming this way, 1.25 went this way, that means the remainder of the current must have went this way, because there are only two paths to follow. And in this case, if this is 1.25, this will also be 1.25. So we have just calculated the resistance here, and I know that the rest will be here. You may have already noticed that 1.25 is actually half of 2.5 which kind of makes sense. Well, it does make sense because we know that these two resistors are equal, so the current will be split equally. Half will go up and half will go down. So half of 2.5, of course, is 1.25. So you can skip the calculation if the, they are equal. You just half it. But if the numbers are different, then of course it's better to use the calculation and you will get the correct answer. This is for grade 12 advanced only you will also need to deal with internal resistance. Real cells and real batteries have an, an internal resistance. So even if I said this battery has two volts, if it can handle two volts from the battery, but when I connect it to the circuit and I use a voltmeter and I check using a voltmeter, you will actually find, hold on a second, it's lying. It said it's got 2 volts, but I'm only getting 1.5 that is coming from the battery. What's happened? Well, what's happened is when I connected it to a load, which is like the resistor, um, I have lost some volts. Energy actually gets used trying to get out of the battery itself. It's like trying to kick the electrons out of the cell. So there is a small internal resistance involved. That causes the lost volts, the difference of the voltages. So I can figure out what the lost volts was. I can just do 2 minus 1.5. And I lost how much? I lost 0 0.5 volts. Gone. Energy was used just before I could even get out of the battery. OK? So I actually went and solved this with you in the class. Let me erase my writing over here. I already solved it with you. If I wanted to find the lost volts, I can just do the EMF, which is what the battery has, and the main, which is what the voltage told me, plus whatever my lost volts was. My EMF, as I mentioned, was two volts coming from the battery. I said it would have been two volts. But the voltmeter told me it was 1.5. So that, of course, means the remainder was 0 0.5. VEMF equals V main plus V lost. This is one way to figure out any of these. You will be asked for one of these, and we've just figured out for lost. You might be asked to find the EMF if it gives you both. If it doesn't give you both, you can calculate it by using Ohm's law. V equals IR plus V equals I little r. If you know the current and you know the resistors, we can use this rule to find the EMF. We just add uh, these two IRs. This times this plus this times this. Another way you can see it is you can treat this as a normal circuit. If I wanted to find V, I can just do IR. I, and of course these two resistors are in series, they're in the same path, so R1 plus R2. R plus little r. So if this is 10 ohms and this is maybe 3 ohms, I can calculate the total voltage. I can calculate the current. I can calculate the internal resistor. I just need to rearrange my formula. If I know the voltage and I know the current, I can find each of these values of the resistors if I know one of them. So the questions will be a little bit different and we will do some revision on this next week as well. Another thing that grade 12 need to know is milliamp hours. Something we discussed. One milliamp hour is l literally what it says. One milliamp that can run for one hour. 
If I do one milliamp for one hour, I do know that there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. I will do one second multiplied by 60 to get to minutes, multiplied by 60 again to get me to hours. So that is 3,600 seconds in one hour. So I can do one milliamp, I can do one milli, so one times 10 to the minus three, multiplied by 3,600, that gives me 3.6 amps. Amps, seconds. Or you can just say one milliamp is, one milliamp hour, sorry, is 3.6 coulombs. Because we know coulombs, Q equals I, T. This is I, the current, this is this unit for seconds, which is time, so I, T, coulombs. 1 milliamp hours, 3.6 coulombs, or 3.6 amps seconds.